Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com and today we're continuing our coverage of the 2020 Candidates Tournaments. We are in round number four, had the day off yesterday. We're back in the next three days for three more rounds. Our competitors today, White's going to be played by MVL. He is at the top of the standings with two draws and one win. His win came against Ding Lian. His opponent today, Alexander Grishuk, he has three draws, so he's half a point behind the leaders in the tournament. Has found himself in a lot of time uh, trouble over the past few games. Uh, seems to spend a lot of time on some moves that many of the commentators uh, have said should not take that long. So that's some time crunch. Very difficult to have a victory when you always are against the clock. But has managed to come out with a draw in each of the first three games. We'll be looking to improve upon his performance in this game, playing the black pieces, though, against MVL. So we'll go ahead and get into the game here with MVL starting with E4. E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Bishop to B5. So go into the Rai Lopez. And then Knight F6, Castle on the King side. So this is the Berlin defense, which we see most common in the Rai Lopez at the highest level. Knight takes here on e4, pawn up to d4. So a couple different variations that white can go down. This seems to be one of the more common variations that we've seen. Knight comes back to d6. Not necessarily my favorite variation uh, in the Berlin defense. The main reason is after bishop takes and the pawn takes here. And pawn to e5. Many of these are almost forced. There's not a lot of other good variations uh, that either side has. Uh, knight comes down here to f5, and then the queen comes off the board, and this tends to be a, a drawish game. Both sides still have a lot of opportunity uh, to come up with an advantage, uh, but queens come off the board, one of the minor pieces. No sides really have a control of the center of the board. It's very difficult for either side to gain the upper hand in this particular variation in the Berlin defense. Both sides continue on MVL H3, then King here to E8. Both sides starting to get more to pieces involved into the game. Knight to C6, pawn down here H5, Bishop F4, uh, opening up the door for the Rook to swing over into the center of the board, also protecting the pawn here on E5. Bishop to E7, Rook to D1 as we talked about, Bishop to E6, getting the light square Bishop involved, opening up for the Rook to swing over here to D8 at some point as well. This Bishop is attacking the pawn, but the Knight is protecting it here on A2. Knight swings up to G5, and then Rook down here to H6. So Grishik is fine giving up his Bishop here. doesn't seem like he wants to really hold on to that because he's just inviting MVL to take here on E6. MVL decides not to do that. First swings his rook over here to e1. And then bishop down to b4. Now in the game, we see a3. To me, I'm not the biggest fan of that because you're just opening up the door for bishop takes, pawn recaptures. And then you have this awkward uh, double pawn here on the c file. It's fine if black has it because you have the connecting pawn here on the b file. Uh, you can always... Uh, take back here uh, at some points and not have double pawns. But the way it's set up right now, it's not that great for, for white. Uh, eventually, black's going to be able to attack this and potentially go up a pawn in material. He had another option. Uh, instead of a3 here, he could just play knight to e4. If he's not going to take the bishop, which he already had the opportunity for, uh, then knight to e4 makes a lot of sense. It's defending the knight right here. Uh, it's also... Having a discovered attack against this rook here on h6, so may force black to move this. Uh, but if the bishop does take, you know, he could always take this, this rook up here. Uh, but if he decides, yeah, I don't want you to take my rook, he could always just swing back over here. This knight's still on a good square here. He doesn't have to worry about double pawns on the c file. But in the game, we do see the pawn come here to a3. Bishop takes, pawn recaptures, and then h4. MVL pushes forward with g4, and then we see en passant. If you're not familiar with en passant, uh, when you know black in this case is on the fourth rank here, uh, and white moves up two squares, black has one move and one move only to capture in a really weird way, and that is diagonal here to g3. Uh, if he doesn't, he doesn't have another opportunity after this, but he decides to go ahead and do that, and VL recaptures here on g3. Knight comes up to e7, 
and then we see h4. So white doing a good job. When your opponent has uh, one particular bishop, you want to put your material on the other colors, meaning this is a light square bishop. So MVL putting most of his pawns, it's a little more difficult right now with uh, these double pawns here, but the rest of his pawns on dark squares pretty much makes this bishop a lot less useful in the game. Now we see knight coming down here to d5, attacking both the bishop and the pawn here on c3. Bishop comes back here to c1. I thought for sure we would see bishop down to d2. Uh, yes, it's attacking both uh, the bishop and the pawn, but the bishop can just swing back here to d2, protect this pawn. NBL decides instead to bring his bishop back here to c1. Only reason he would do that is he has a plan to get back some material because he's giving up a pawn right now. And Alexander Gudishek definitely has uh, the upper hand in this position. Rook here to d3, attacking the knight. Knight comes back here to a4. Rook to f3, uh, attacking the square here on uh, f7. Preparing to double barrel with his rook over here to f1. Uh, but this bishop on e6, at least for the time being, doing a good job of holding on to this. Now, uh, MVL could also take here on e6 at some point. That could open up for when the pawn recaptures or depending on how the rook recaptures. If there's two rooks here on the f file, uh, they could really start to chip away at this f7 square. So instead, we see Alexander Gudisha bring his bishop here to d5, attacking the rook and still protecting uh, the f7 square while getting out of harm's way of the knight that could take it here on e6. Rook swings up here to f4, just improving the position a little bit, still preparing for the rook to come over here, but also attacking the knight here on a4. Knight swings back to b6, rook to f1 as we talked about. Rook to g6, not really going to be doing uh, too much as far as attacking the knight, but just wants to be there in case the knight moves. Then it can have a free square to come down, take the pawn here on g3, checking the king. So just really taking away some of the threats that white has moving the knights. Rook to uh, f5, uh, this is a discovered attack at some point if the pawn ever comes here to e6, can always attack this bishop. So just something to keep in mind, bishop immediately gets out of the way, and that is bishop here to c4, still defending the pawn, now attacking the rook here on f1. Rook to e1, uh, you have this pawn here on e5, it seems to be the biggest threat that white has going in the game. So wants to have protection behind that, so we can start pushing up the board here. King to e7, recognizing that wants to start stopping some of the, the pushing that's going on. Also wants to allow his rook on a8. If it wants to swing over to attack on the king side, it has that option as well. So white's still down a pawn in material, decides to start pushing a little bit more. See if he can find a weakness in black setup and potentially get some of that material back. Plays h5 and then rook over here to h6. Then pushes g4 here. Uh, and then we see rook come back here to h8. Pawn to a4. Knight takes here on a4. And then bishop to uh, a3 check. Now this is an interesting position because white's now given up two pawns. Uh, you can see black has six pawns. Uh, to white's four pawns here, but the bishop on a3 is first going to be able to get some material back because after pawn to c5, yes, it is protected by this knight here on a4, but it does set up for this move here of e6. Now, this pawn's protected both by the knight and the rook here on e1, but it also opens up the door for the bishop to take here on c5. This rook is protecting this pawn. Now we see f6 here, and then the bishop's going to take here check. Rook ta or knight takes here on c5. Rook's going to swing over and capture and says, yeah, if you want to take my material, that's fine. Pawn takes. Rook comes up here to c7, is able to take that pawn check, and is also going to prepare to come down and take this bishop here on uh, c4. So now both sides are equal in material, but you can also see that black has these awkward double pawns on the G file. So in a sense, white's a little bit better off. So white going all the way down from one pawn to equal in material, but kind of up a, a pawn once he can capture this material. And part of the reason for this is that Alexander Grushik is starting to go down on time. Uh, we are uh, approaching that 40 move mark. Uh, but if you look at his time, 
just does not nearly have as much as MVL and doesn't seem to be making the precise moves that he did at the beginning of the game when he had a slight advantage. So from here, pawn down to a5, rook over here to d1, check, uh, rook to e4, just trying to hold down this central pawn here, pass pawn that wants to be pushing forward. This is his main path to victory here. Rook over here to d8, uh, we see rook to b1. White's not looking to exchange right away. He still feels like he has an opportunity to win this game. Doesn't want to give up all his material here. Rook to b8. Black's definitely in defense mode, trying to hold on as he has for the first three rounds of the tournament for a draw here. Rook to b5, and then we see Black start to push on the queen side of the board with a4. Rook takes here on a g5, as we talked about. Now White is up a pawn in material. Rook to g8 here. Pawn to h6, we do see an exchange right here. Now both sides are equal in material. Rook takes on a4. You can see, yes, white's up, uh, but it's still going to be very difficult to uh, to get a victory now. Pawn to h5, uh, then king starts to get involved into the game. Rook takes here on a g4, and this is also a great little outpost here uh, that... You know, once we take here, he could take with his pawn, could take with his rook here, decides to take with his rook, keep his pawn here on the h file as far away from the king uh, as he can, so the king can't easily swing and capture that pawn. Uh, we do see uh, the, the pawn recapture. Uh, there's just no way around this. Uh, and from here, uh, the king takes on e6. King takes here, uh, and then this is a drawn game. There's just no way for either side to win this. Both sides are going to be moving over to the queen side of the board, uh, but at the end of the day, it would be very difficult for either side uh, to lose this. They tried everything in their power uh, to go to an end game where they had a slight advantage, but there is just no way to... Uh, to win from here. So after all the pieces, which we rarely see in a chess game, most players are going to uh, offer a draw well before this, but uh, we get to a point where there's only kings on the board and that is a drawn game. So MVL still at the top. They were all draws today. So four matches and all draws. MVL still sits at the top. There's a three-way tie uh, with uh, with the chess players, and then right behind that, half a point behind, and that is Alexander Grishik. Still undefeated in the tournament, but Remember, it does not matter if you are undefeated. That does not mean you are going to win the tournament. So he's going to be looking to get his first win tomorrow because uh, so far it's been all draws. Hopefully he can do better with his time. Uh, played really well at the beginning of the game. In the Berlin defense, you don't always see uh, Black have an uh, advantage, and that's exactly what he did. was up a pawn in material, uh, had a pretty good game going from the middle to the end game, but started to run out of time. Uh, I think miscalculated in a few uh, areas and let MVL back into it. Almost gave MVL an opportunity to win the game, but he did correctly defend uh, and ended up with a draw. So almost kind of congratulations to Gdyshuk for getting the draw. Uh, it was still an exciting game. Uh, Berlin defense, you never know what you're going to see. We see uh, many times it's, it's a drawn game, uh, but we did see both sides have a, a small chance. But thank you guys so much for watching. Round number four, hopefully everyone is safe out there, and we will be back tomorrow covering round number five of the 2020 Canada's Tournament.